All right. Uh, this is the, you know, I mean, my, uh, I have been asked to talk about how to write a research proposal and how to get the funding, you see. So I will explain to you some of the points which are essential while preparing a research proposal. And then I will I will uh, share with you some information about different funding agencies that you can approach, you see, okay? And uh, uh, the search proposal, I mean, one of the important point that is you should keep in mind is that I mean, it's the idea which is most important, you see, and 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 you have to highlight that idea, and you have to pitch that idea or market that idea for getting funds, you see. So that has to be the basis, or you can call it in a traditional manner, a hypothesis that you have to have some uh, I mean, central idea on which you have to build your proposal, you see. And, uh, and that your, you should be convinced that your project is important and it is based on strong academic basis, you see. You can't have a, a totally haywire idea which doesn't have any scientific basis. You can't develop that into a proposal, you see. So it has to be well thought out in terms of its research methodology. It's, it's, uh, it's feasible. It's uh, one of the important point which normally all the, the viewers use is that uh, what is the novelty in your proposal, you see? What is new in your proposal? What is the thing that other people have not done so far and you are proposing to do it? So that constitutes the novelty of, of the idea that you have, you see. So you should be clear about that, you see, and you should have strong arguments showing, saying that, that your idea has novelty and has, uh, I mean, uh, uh, other people have not done it, and it's it's you that you are proposing to undertake that kind of research. You see, the other thing which I want to share in, in the beginning, that obviously that I belong to life sciences, that's my area of expertise, but but everything that I will be talking about is applicable to all sciences, including social sciences and humanities. You see, you know. So, so I mean, it is a general uh, impression among many of my colleagues that all this is for natural sciences and uh, there isn't anything for social sciences. Everything, all areas are open to social sciences and humanities as well. It's up to you that how you have to dovetail all your ideas into, into the mainstream uh, research programs of different funding agencies, okay? Who want a research proposal should answer the following questions, you see. And, and that you should be very, very careful about all answering all these questions. One is, what will I study? You know, what is your research about, you see? And why is it important? And how will I do the research? You know, that is the methodology part. That is, why is it important is that you have to have all the literature to view, the methodology and, and all that. And then what will I study is obviously, you have to say that this will be your sample or this will be in case of population studies, this will be the size of the sample, et cetera, et cetera, you see. okay? Now, let me come to a little bit of uh, uh, actually concrete uh, template for writing a proposal. You have to have, you see, the most important thing is that you should be clear in your mind that what is the hypothesis of your proposal and what are the specific objectives that you want to achieve, you see, Do you know? Uh, I, I I repeat all these things again and again that any anything that you answer should not be verbose, you see, or should not be an essay in English, you see. You should have very specific, concrete 
objective and you sh and any background any introduction that you write should be very specific and i mean i mean should not be eating around the bush you see but you should be very specific and and say the things that, that you want to do you see okay and it, that should include obviously objectives and hypotheses i have already talked about and it should give the background it should cover the literature the view that what other people have already done and uh, what you are going to do you see and then obviously you have to highlight the significance of all this and uh, uh, that why your study is important then you know if if that involves any theoretical framework uh, discuss the definitions and and the categories you plan to use in your research then methodology is another very important component of the research proposal and that shows whether the principal investigator is well versed with the technology or not you see or well versed with the research methodology or not you see so this is an important point which the, the viewers normally look at that whether this person know something about the subject or not you see and then expect obviously the expected outcomes and then differences you have to complete the proposal by giving all the differences that you have quoted in your text you see so these are uh, all important areas and that you have to have, have to consider if you're writing a research proposal you see writing a research proposal is is uh, I mean uh, not uh, should not be taken lightly. You see, it is a very serious matter, and you should uh, devote all the, the all your skills in order to develop a research proposal. You see. And now, from the point of view of the research grant giving agencies. Uh, based on my experience that all these proposals must be on the given format. You see, every funding agency, may it be national or international, have their own formats and their own proposal uh, I mean, uh, forms. And you must read them very carefully and read the, carefully the questions asked, you see, you know. I mean, uh, it should not be done in a very I mean, light manner, and you should respond in a precise manner. The contents of the proposal should not be verbose, as I've already said, that everything should be very succinct and to the point, you see, and it should not be, uh, I mean, you, there should be, uh, I mean, you should choose the language appropriately. Then after you have written the proposal, the um, most important thing is that you have to keep your fingers crossed till you get the opinion of the, the, the viewers. You see, the, the viewers are the people who go through your proposal critically. They are the people in the in experts. They are the experts in that particular area, and they are the people who will say whether your proposal is of any use or can be funded or cannot be funded or should be amended or you know all, all their comments will receive and you must uh, take the, the viewers comment uh, very seriously you know and you should uh, never never think that this the viewers is biased and he is uh, uh, he's trying to pull your leg or you know uh, uh, or trying to do something, whatever is the case, the viewers, the viewer has the final authority. You see, so you must take his command, his or her comments, very seriously, and then you must respond to them logically. I mean, uh, and you should consider the the viewer to be an expert in that area, and he might have some some uh, comments which are useful. To you, you see. So you should take that in in that spirit, you see. And uh, and if you think that the 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 viewers' comments are not scientifically appropriate, you should answer them. You should respond 
to the comments and but in a very logical manner you see you said that no your comments are scientifically i mean in a in a very diplomatic manner that i think that this should be like this you see anyway and if you think that these are appropriate you should immediately say that we will uh, we will incorporate your comments in the proposal and you am amend the proposal accordingly and then you incorporate the comments if you are convinced you see so this is a normal procedure and and also uh, uh, similarly whenever you are also publishing your work the the peer review journals the editors or the reviewers review your paper and they send you comments you should adopt a similar attitude there as well you, see, you should not uh, try to unnecessarily argue with the reviewer but try to you know if you think that the viewer has some point we should immediately say that okay i'm going to amend the the proposal or if the reviewer says that you have to do some additional experiment or you additional study or something you should uh, uh, if you think that it is doable you should accept that you see okay And these are all simple points. Huh? I'm sure all of you are aware that when you submit, you have to, I mean, all all these funding agencies require around us the ports and uh, you have to submit that uh, uh, properly and always stick to the sanctioned budget, work accordingly. I will, I would like to say something about the budget part as well. I don't know if I have... Uh, See, as far as the budget is concerned, that is also an area where the, the viewers can have an idea whether you are serious about your work or not. You see, you know, because if you if you have a very uh, um, expanded budget or you are putting things which uh, the, the viewer thinks that are unnecessarily, you are trying to add up the budget and try to to try to build your laboratory, I mean, then that is not uh, acceptable, you see, you know. These research projects, whatever you do, are not meant to, to establish a laboratory, you see, or establish a totally new area, you see. These are essentially, if, I mean, they support some ongoing research you see something has already been done and you want to continue that and that is the way the and that should be shown in the budget and in the budget part you should if if it is not asked for even then you should say that these one two three facilities are already available in your department or in your university you, see, you know so so that gives a strength to your uh, project and you should only ask for that much money that you genuinely think is required for undertaking or executing that particular project. You see. Now, I I would like to share with you a very general uh, observation, and that is the I, I'm sure that all of you are aware of the seventeen sustainable development goals. You see. Nowadays, in virtually in every funding agency or every proposal that you will make, they will ask you that which sustainable developmental goal your project is addressing. You see, this will be a common, uh, I mean, uh, question. You see, because uh, all I mean, if you look at all these seventeen, it covers all aspects of life all aspects of our activities and and these are the areas where uh, every country and everywhere you, you need some input uh, to overcome these goals you see you know so 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 you have to be aware of all these all these uh, sustainable development goals and this is uh, at least in pakistan all the funding agencies have a very clear cut 
uh, question that which uh, sustainable development goal your project is addressing you see you know so so you should be aware of the things that anything in social sciences or anywhere or in natural sciences that you do is covered by the sustainable development goals for example uh, goal number 16 peace justice and strong institutions you see it's, it's covered everything uh, you know so, so partnerships for the goals you see or uh, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production. These all are areas from uh, starting from the the public policy to to economics. You see, you know. So, so, so I think that you should have people who are in social sciences. They should have uh, an idea about the sustainable development goals while developing a proposal. You see. Okay, now I I have put in uh, all these points, and these are all some have some duplication, duplication I mean. But these are the ones. If you look at them, if you uh, I mean uh, try to understand them, uh, that these are the bases on which your proposal is is evaluated. You see, you know. Number one is its scientific quality, innovativeness, and novelty of your research plan or proposal. As I already said, that you have to highlight uh, its scientific quality and its 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 novel. Uh, you know whether it it has any any novelty or not. You see, so this is you have to go out of your way in order to demonstrate this in your proposal. You see. And then the relevance of the proposed research to contemporary global challenges, significance of proposed research to national issues, contribution of expected results to social sphere, development of science and technology, potential for creation of new knowledge. These All these points I have taken from the evaluation per, uh, uh, formats of different funding agencies. You see, you know, so these are many of them are common in, in all these uh, funding agencies. You see, then potential of acquiring skills in terms of career development, transfer of knowledge in and outside parent organizations through conferences, publications, public outreach, etc. You see, ability to create a long-term network, attract collaborative partners. Etc. And also ranking of your host institution is also one factor, which goes in, uh, uh, which helps you to obtain your funding. You see, access to equipment and high impact research collaborators, if uh, if not available in Pakistan internationally, standing of host supervisor. You know the the host supervisor is the principal investigator in this case, and then financial paper, whether you uh, uh, bench tuition fee experimentation costs uh, uh, can be uh, framed by your parent institution or not. You see. So these are generally, these are the, uh, your proposal will be evaluated based on these uh, areas. You see, you know, this is, I mean, everything is in here. You see. Well, I'm, I'm now let me come to the different funding agencies. Pakistan has uh, uh, very few funding agencies. I mean, the search, uh, this fund the search. Out of them, the most important is the Higher Education Commission. See, and I will, and and I think. If you if you know about the Higher Education Commission in Pakistan, that they, they have actually the, uh, I mean, the most comprehensive and interactive uh, website. You see, so I'm sure that you all of you must have uh, assessed this website at one time or the other. But you, but for they have a comprehensive information about research grants program 
and and their research and innovation thing is very well, uh, which they call it R and D division of HEC, and they play virtually an important role in supporting research in the country, and. Uh, These are all, you see, I mean, going through all this, I mean, there are so many programs which HEC is, is, is operating, is launching, has, is supports research. That's why I say that if you have a good research table idea, funding should not be a problem. You know, because there is so much opportunity nowadays for getting funding for your research. If you are serious, if you have a passion for research, if if you can think of some ideas, and that is only possible if you are aware of the problems of the countries. You know, so so you can think of some and. There are so many, for example, Grand Challenge Fund. It's a very I mean, uh, uh, it, it goes up to two to three million, two hundred to three hundred million rupees worth of grant you can get, and but it's it's most important is that it should be uh, it should be a collaborative collaborative between several institutes. You see, you know. So, so you can have, for example, in environment, in energy, in health, in, in social sciences, everywhere you can uh, have ideas, population, for example, you know. So, so there are several, I mean, if the several institutions join hands and put up a proposal, and that is uh, uh, very appropriate for Grand Challenge Fund, you see. These proposals are announced, you see, they are um, by HEC and with a particular uh, last date for submission of proposals, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Similarly, on a, on a slightly lower scale, are the local challenge funds, you see, which are uh, for the, the problems of, uh, of the community, you see. I mean, those are based for the local challenge fund. That's why I have said that you must understand and know the sustainable developmental goals. You see, all these projects that are awarded are revolving around the SDGs, you see. So you should know what is SDG, you see, and which goals you are uh, aiming at, you see. I mean, people sometimes say that, oh, well, I am I am interested in basic sciences or I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I, the area of research is not covered by all these SDGs. I I can bet you see that anything that you think that it is it is basic or you know it's eventually it has an application in some of these sustainable developmental goals. You see, and similarly you have innovative collaborative research technology development fund. And the most important and commonly known program is the NRPU, which is the National Research Program for Universities. And this is a competitive research grants. All these are competitive research grants, you see, you know, that you have to compete for the idea and, and for uh, the feasibility of your proposal, you see. So this NRPU has been, I mean, last year, they have awarded virtually 1,000 uh, of uh, Rajag and these range from uh, I mean, uh, 3, 4 billion to 10 or 20 billion. So these are uh, quite useful for young scientists, for people who are starting their career. And then these are extremely important uh, program, one of the the most, uh, uh, I mean, uh, what should I say? I mean, uh, very popular program, in my opinion. And then we have all technology transfer support fund, the technology transfer grants, which are for six months. And uh, and then we have problem-based supply. You see, all kinds of 
programs are there. Everything is available on the website and you have to, to visit the website very frequently in order to see that what are their announcement dates, what are the last dates, et cetera, et cetera, and what is the requirement, you see, you know. And similarly, they have uh, uh, grants, very dot research programs, and then CPEC also, and grants for organizing seminars and conferences, textbook writing support, and then they have also a partner research probability. Similarly, the others are Pakistan Program for Collaborative Research, Establishment of Office of Research, Oryx, Patent Filing, Centers for Excellence, if you have. And these are all uh, sort of, uh, I mean, not for individuals, but if you have a, a laboratory or an institute which is doing excellent work, you can supply for uh, special grants to, to upgrade the infrastructure of your laboratory and convert it into a national center of excellence, you see. So all said and done, there is there are lots of opportunities which HEC offers, and it's up to you to, to make use of them. And uh, uh, because they, in my opinion, Ball is always in the court of uh, academia. You see, it it is it is there who has to use that, and they should know where the the opportunities lies. These are I, I will just go through them. These are all uh, the cover sheet for research proposals. You see, you can see. You can see that it, it 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 covers all arts and humanities, economics and social research, engineering and physical sciences, medical sciences, biotechnology, biological sciences, natural and environment sciences, science and technology. You know, so anything, you know, under under an academic institution, anything you do is covered by all these areas. You see, you know, so. So, so I want to again emphasize that it is not only for uh, natural sciences or uh, agriculture or biotechnology. It is it is all for all all kinds of sciences. You see, for example, this is a subject agriculture is the major field. Soil science is the minor field, and macronutrient specialization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, so so. This is the way, and the, you have to give the details of the AI. These are generally the same. You know. Now, other organization which funds research is the Pakistan Science Foundation, and they, they have also fared the number of programs, which is research support, research support program, uh, and the institutional Quran supported to scientific societies, support to scientific societies, and Quran for journalists, journals, and publications, you see. But they're, one of their very attractive program is the Natural Sciences Linkages Program. This is based on an endowment, uh, which was given to them by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, uh, and, and uh, that they established a natural sciences linkages program under which uh, all uh, cutting edge science, I um, mean, uh, science related to life sciences can be funded in that. And that is, uh, um, and because of this is based on an endowment, the 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 money from uh, as a result of the markup, is always there, and so there is no problem. The government, I mean, whether the government has uh, given them any money or not, the money is always with the, the natural sciences, uh, with the Pakistan Science Foundation, and similar uh, endowment is with the Pakistan Agriculture Research Council as well, and I have been 
personally involved in initiation or establishment of these endowments while I was the chairman of PARC. Anyway, okay. So this is also very, I mean, for a medium size grant, say five to 10 million, you can always uh, approach them and uh, you can see. And it, it gives down the website for all the objectives and the research priority area, et cetera. And it's also their form. The forms are many times very similar. The other one is the Pakistan Academy of Sciences, which is uh, uh, are the apex body in the country. And uh, uh, it, it, uh, it is, uh, it deals with uh, all the, uh, so it also provides some such grants and uh, rebel grants and then awards, gold medals and awards uh, by uh, selecting some scientists, but this is uh, 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 an organization uh, which to become a fellow of Pakistan Academy of Sciences is always an honor because it is based on your uh, your uh, contribution to science and uh, and this is the, and in the same manner we have the, the third world which is now the World Academy of Sciences Tawas and that is also a very prestigious organization and uh, I have the honor of being a member of the WAS also and a member of the Pakistan Academy of Sciences as well and, uh, and they also provide uh, different you know, support for research. This is, uh, I mean now I'm mean, talking about the, the information technology. This is Ignite is the is the is the new name for the IC, uh, ICT the R and D fund. You see, all all the uh, all the uh, all the telecommunication industry, including all these uh, Telenor and Mobilink and you know Zoom and all these organizations have to pay a certain uh, amount of cess or a tax which we call r and d tax you see so that is deposited to the government and that is a fairly large amount and on on, on that basis the, the earlier on it was called ict r and d fund and now it is called ignite and then and they provide uh, major funding to specially IT related activities. For example, uh, there is a national business incubation center established at LUMS and that has been established by the 100% uh, uh, grant from Ignite. You see. So they are, these are the organizations which can, who can approach them and develop any, any proposal with the involvement of some IT aspect and, and that you will be eligible for a grant from Ignite as well. See, I mean, this is university. I mean, these are all uh, websites. All information is available on the website. There is another, uh, the Comstech, you might be aware is the committee uh, organize, uh, or, or committee on uh, science and technology of uh, OIC of Organization of Islamic Countries, and this is located in Islamabad, and they are also responsible for supporting scientific research, and they have a collaboration with ICGB. ICGB is uh, the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. It is located in. Rieste, Italy, and, uh, and uh, they also uh, support uh, research grants and short-term fellowships. Then Comstec has also a collaboration with IFS. IFS is uh, International Foundation for Science. It is uh, based in Stockholm, and uh, it, it has research programs 
uh, and it supports uh, uh, the search of the of the young scientists see of the people who are at the beginning of their research career they are most eligible for applying for IFS research grants and the Pakistan Council for Science and Technology this is this is another uh, I mean this is the organization which compiles all the data about the research and awards research productivity the allowances you see every year and then this is therefore this is quite popular among the, the academia you see. now let me uh, briefly talk about the international funding agencies There is an organization called Human Volunteer Science Program, see, and uh, this is uh, it. It supports international collaborations in basic research focused on the elucidation of the sophisticated and complex mechanisms of living organisms. This is focused on life sciences, uh, and uh, you can. Go to its website and you will find different opportunities for research grants and postdoctoral fellowships, etc. You see, this is their uh, details of their features about different grants. Now, other organization that you should be aware of is the Alexander von Humboldt Stiftung. Stiftung is foundation. See, you know. So AVH, as it is normally called, is quite popular and uh, uh, and many of the Nobel laureates have in their careers have been Alexander von Humboldt fellows. See. So uh, I mean uh, all the young people should know about it because uh, you can, if you have uh, good ideas, you can apply to any German uh, institution and uh, uh, interact with the professors there. And if the professor finds your idea doable and interesting, they can recommend you for the award of the Alexander von Humboldt Fellowship. And, and that will, I mean, I, mean, I mean, once you are an Alexander von Humboldt Fellow, it's a, it's a lifelong association. But after you come back, they will support you for your research also. You can ask for the equipment grant also. And if you want to go to any conference, they will sponsor you, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They will support all your research activities. Uh, I mean, all along, all your life, you see. Also, so that is uh, most attractive. And, uh, you know, I happen to be one of their uh, fellows, which I said uh, ever a long time back. But we have been utilizing their support also all along. So that, but you should go to their website and find out uh, how, how and when you are supposed to apply. You see, okay. you know, find the funding that suits your individual career. You see, you should. I would generally, uh, general advice that I can give you that now everything is available on the websites. You see, you have to spend time on going around these websites and finding out what is available. You see. <laughs> Nobody will come to you and tell you that now you should do this. It is up to you to find out, you see. There is another organization of the UNICEF which is related to tropical diseases. And they also support if you are in the area of public health. I mean, this is a very attractive 
uh, area and and uh, uh, to to our, I mean, in my opinion, it's it's a win win situation if you try to approach them and give them some ideas and you know and they will definitely give respond. You see, other very famous and well known trust is the Welcome Trust, which gives a lot of funding. Uh, again, in the area of health and uh, uh, public health, especially, you know, and uh, if you are interested in all the infectious diseases, I mean, welcome. Uh, but again, these are very highly competitive, and you have to have a very good and novel idea in order to be successful. Well, these are all applied. You will have the presentation will be available with you. The Third World Academy, or which is it's now called the World Academy of Sciences, has several uh, programs for young scientists, and the most important is the research grants, and then visiting scientists, and uh, you know you can um, become an associate fellow or associate member, I think. And and you can when go to the labs. This is the International Foundation for Science we had talked about earlier in collaboration with Comstech. But IFS itself is a uh, um, and is a very important uh, um, and funder of science, and it, it it funds all over biological sciences, uh, water sciences. You know, and uh, uh, health area, agriculture, every, everything, see, social sciences included. Uh, and uh, incidentally, I've been I've been member of their board of trustees for about nine years, and I know that they, that it is an excellent international organization. These are its program again. I would uh, urge you to visit their website and and have a look at all these uh, all these you know, areas taking basic research grants also special objectives you have to have okay then global environmental facility global environment facility it is called jeff and then this is also these are all these funding agencies have uh, they support the relatively larger grants. You see, of a collaborative nature. You see, you know, so you have to have uh, two or three. The the boards can come together, and uh, you need because there are so many the uh, environmental issues. You see, which includes all social sciences also and the natural sciences as well. And if you can combine all the expertise together, I mean, Jeff is a very a important organization to approach. These are all related to Jeff, you see. This is a, a, another environment, natural environment foundation. Nagao is a natural environment foundation, and this is also uh, I mean, gives funds to the research related to environment, especially. And you see, in all this, climate change is the focal area. You see that climate change is the one. Which covers every aspect of uh, of our life, and uh, and the research can be focused in social sciences also, in economics, in agriculture, in in life sciences, in health. You know, so all these areas are covered uh, by climate change, and which is very much under all activities related to natural environment. British Council is another one. 
there i mean at one time it was very popular in pakistan and lot of support was given by british council but now their activities have dwindled and i don't know how much uh, activity are nowadays you see yes cap 75 is a, is another one i've given you the website and uh, it is for actually for enterprises at the entrepreneur shape if you have got uh, you want to improve your skills for mainstreaming gender statistics you know so it is based on that you see then jica is is an international cooperation agency which funds a lot in pakistan but these are all bigger uh, project developmental projects and uh, you know if your institution if your uh, university wants to apply they should sigma 9 level design research on our society this is launching aid of research applications these are all also uh, agencies which fund some research you see it is uh, it has it has a function with the cgir online cgir application to apply and for tips for creating a successful submission online cgir online gir option okay the asia foundation is another very old organization which has been supporting a lot of uh, different uh, projects but again it it gives a larger funding especially on women and uh, environment and other areas uh, but these are all uh, if you have a you know group of two or, or, or the searcher join hand and then they can apply for the asia foundation support this is another nesta this is the funding in a patient a practice guide i have given you all the websites you see you should go to the websites and according to your own interest you can find out you see global research council is similarly here uh, about meetings trc publication etc you see global innovation fund is also there canadian development inter sida is is another developmental agency you know the developmental agencies are, are not for the individual grants but these are to the institution or to the government you see that they, they interact with this this is government of uk you know earlier on they had the uh, defed which was their developmental agency now it is it has been changed to government of uk international development funding and they are also in the same manner uh, these are not for individual grants but for bigger uh, collaborative grants idrc is the canadian one this is uh, this is a possibility that if you again if you have a have a consortium of uh, uh, researchers you can apply for uh, idrc and idrc has been funding uh, such projects in pakistan this is the islamic development bank this also funds again in your proposal has to be collaborative and uh, you know uh, and, and then you can have different ideas different problems which again if if it is very much related to sdgs it will be uh, easier to get the funding 
or red is uh, is is another uh, from the North Asian agency. These are all for you no know, red different call for. Again, if you if you are regular visitor to the websites, you can find all these. Uh, the, for example, the Norwegian Climate and Forest Funding to Civil Society. You know, the same is, I mean, it is all very much tilted towards social sciences. Swedish CEDA, you must have heard about it also. This is also similarly, you know, Swedish funding agency. These are all the important things, and this is the meat of the presentation. We have given you all these, and you have all, all these uh, uh, the websites, which are all active websites, and you should visit them, and uh, you know you can find out the information of your investors. So I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Kosser. Um, we haven't had any questions because your presentation was very, uh, you know, descriptive and gave all the, uh, I mean, a huge treasure of funding agencies, I think, which is very helpful all in uh, one place. Like somebody has written from AIOU, it was a treasure trove. Uh, but there is one question, and rightly so, yes. I would say the same. There's only one comment and perhaps quasi uh, question. No, there's another one. That there's a common perception. It is GCU Muhammad Hassan, I think. There's a common perception regarding that funding through government channels uh, needs strong connections. So what is your comment about that? And uh, yes. at the same Absolutely. one, yeah. yeah. Is that all? Can no, and the, the same uh, Muhammad Hassan says that, uh, and I've seen and I've scholar that you are you can win an international grant. It's a better chances of winning an international grant than a government one uh, on merit. So these are two interrelated, I think, from the same person. It's talking about connections and perhaps lack of merit in Pakistani grants. In the ward of Pakistani grants, that's that's yeah, a very that's, strong. That's true. Yeah. Um, is there any other question? No, or, I think uh, okay, you explained okay. very well. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. You, you see, this is. Uh, uh, I I uh, I tend to agree and also not agree. You see, you know, <laughs> because. Having a national grant is a national. I mean, all these grants that uh, uh, I've talked about, about HEC, about BSF, etc. I mean, these are not uh, government grants. These are national competitive grants. You see, you know, and uh, uh, and 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 therefore uh, you can't call them uh, call them. Uh, Government grants. These are not government grants. These are all competitive grants. You see, okay. The international grants are for international grants. They also see whether you have any experience of running uh, uh, nationally funded grants or not. You see, you know. So you can't. I mean, if you are an assistant professor, I mean, you can go for international grants also. Uh, but there also you have to show what is your experience, you see, of turning a uh, competitive research grants, you see. So, so it is always better to start by having. If, that's why I say that NRPU is 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 uh, one of the best uh, opportunity for the younger scientists to have that. You see now, if you if you if you don't have a confidence. In uh, in uh, in the competitive research grant system of NRPU, then I'm sorry I can't help you, but uh, you have to have uh, confidence because 
if if they are giving one thousand rounds to the academia, you know, and they are all based on some kind of a, a peer the, the view and uh, competitiveness. So so obviously there must be some merit in it. You can't say that. Every... Yeah. All um, are uh, awarded on basis of. You see, I I, I can I can uh, talk with confidence because I have gone through all these all these uh, international grants also, and, uh, and 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 national grants as well. For example, I will give you an example. You see, you know, in the, in the early days, we started publishing our work in Pakistani journals, you see, with the very nationalistic point of view, because we should strengthen the Pakistani journals, you see. But then when I applied for, for an NSF, US NSF grant, I was told uh, that uh, for the last uh, two, three years, you have been publishing only in Pakistani journals. You have not published in international journals, you see. So, you know, so that was a negative uh, point. So similarly, uh, you know, if you don't have a national wallet, that, uh, uh, I mean, that is a kind of a negative point. You see. So in my opinion, if you are a, a young person starting in your career, you must go for the, the all these competitive research grants which are being offered. And you are Fora yeah. of funding agencies and the opportunities was not there. You see, so you should be very lucky, feel yourself lucky that you have opportunities from all these uh, organizations. Um, there was a question about IDRC. Why? What is IDRC? And I think IDRC is is a, uh, if you go to their website, it's a IDRC. That is a uh, acronym. international. Development Research Center, yes. And I think if you go to the website... It's a, it's yeah. a, it's a Canadian uh, international development of uh, yeah. research. Or... Research Center, yeah. It's, it, uh, it's, a, it's a Canadian uh, organization. Yes. So you can go to the website to see if you are eligible for uh, support. Sometimes I've noticed there are grants that are offered, but some, um, there are quite a few IDRC and th that actually are limited to certain regions. Uh, and so perhaps it is worth looking at you know, if South Asian uh, you know, developing countries are included. And uh, we are going through the poll and Dr. Kosser, you have a lot of satisfied participants, a good presentation, informative, interesting, treasure trove, helpful, mm, one or two research proposals. One has said, we would, uh, Ruksar, AIOU, Hafiz Ruksar says, can you please share one or two research proposals from social studies? who rewarded the research grants nationally or internationally. And so that I think would be a bit difficult. I do not know, Kosser, if would you would have uh, any um, research proposals that were accepted for any grants, uh, especially in social science. I don't think so. Uh, may I add over here so, that I, 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 I don't, I can I can uh, give you example of our uh, FC college. You see, you know, yeah. our our colleague Dr. Sarah Izvi from uh, sociology the department for the NRPU grant recently. I don't know the title, you see, but uh, I know that they got the grant. Yes, but I I also have Since noticed I'm, that I'm not a social scientist. I don't know. Yes. No, but uh, Kosser, I have noticed that when the call for grants is made and you visit their website, sometimes they give the topics and a brief abstract of the proposals that have been accepted in the past. 
And I have noticed that usually, get, and they offer a template. So you have a pretty good idea of what sort of proposals would be helpful for that grant. So the past history of the awarded grant uh, proposals is uh, actually very helpful to see. Um, very nice sessions arranged by CLT, that is Rizwanullah, from the, somebody from Nigeria, Emilian. I have met her a couple of times at conferences and lots of sets, FCC. Uh, excellent pre uh, presentation, Emilian writes. And so uh, there's a, a lot of, all are looking eagerly, looking forward to your um, PowerPoint, which is like rightfully a treasure trove of uh, grant sites. So if there are no more questions, may we call it a day. Uh, I do not see any more except uh, lots of compliments to you, Kosser. And thanks thank for a remarkable session. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to thank uh, all the participants, you see, and I wish them all the best in their careers. And yeah. anything that we can further do, please let us know. Yes. We can further guide you or help you or whatever we can. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, Kossar yeah. Abdullah has, is rightfully could be a mentor, especially for natural sciences and how to go about research. So thank you so much. Thank you. Um, see you soon. Thank you, Kossar. Delightful.